and welcome friends. In the last presentation, we got acquainted with the theodolite traverse and computation of latitude as well as departure. Now we will move ahead. We know that there is presence of certain error which needs to be balanced. So in this particular presentation, we will be discussing about the various methods in order to balance the travels, such as arbitrary boundage and transit rule. We will also discuss about the recording of the entries in systematic form, such as Gale's travels table. We will discuss about plotting of the Traverse and by making use of this particular plotted traverse, how we can work out the area of that particular traverse will also be discussed. So, as you learn the content, you will be able to balance the traverse as well as record the entries and apply the corrections by Gale's traverse table plot the travels and determine the area of that particular travels by making use of various methods. So as we discussed in our earlier presentation, because of the personal errors, because of the natural errors, because of the instrumental errors, there has to be presence of certain closing error. This particular closing error can be considered in its two components as sigma L and sigma T. This error AF1 can be worked out by making use of this particular expression. As we discussed previously, we can express the relative closing error as closing error E divided by the perimeter of traverse small p. We also discussed that this particular relative closing of error is usually expressed as 1 by P by E. As we have the values of this particular sigma D as well as sigma L, its direction can be worked out as sigma d by sigma l. As we compute this particular closing error, we can check whether this particular error is within the permissible limits by making use of this particular expression list count times square root of n where n is number of slides. For the Category of the traverses, what can be the permissible closing error? Already you know about as we discussed in the previous presentation. If we refer to literature, in order to balance the traverse, in order to adjust the traverse, there are not many methods. Say for example, we can go for arbitrary method, we can go for boundary rule, we can go for transit rule, we can go for axis method, we can go for third rule. Here this particular arbitrary method is the one in which linear means closure is distributed to close traverse geometrically. Whereas in the axis method, The angular measures are expected to be very precise and we correct only lengths as such shape of the traverse remains same. In this particular presentation I am not touching the arbitrary method as well as the axis method. However, as we move ahead you will be able to understand the 
essentialities of Baudish transit at third rule. This Baudish rule is also called as compass rule and it is used when the sides of the travels as well as the include angles are measured with the same precision. This particular rule helps us to distribute the total error in proportion to the length of that particular traverse. So as you see here, the correction to latitude of any side can be worked out as length of that side divided by perimeter of traverse into total error of latitude. In a similar manner, correction to departure of any side is determined as length of that side divided by perimeter of traverse into total error in departure. This can be made more clear with this particular example. Say, we are provided with this particular traverse A, B, C, D, E, A and the data is also provided in the form of its length as well as their bearings. So we can have that recorded in this kind of tabular form. So the various sides and their respective lengths. As we discussed in the previous presentation, this particular latitude as well as the departure can be worked out as L cos theta and L sin theta respectively. Latitude towards north will be treated as positive. Latitude towards south will be treated as negative. Departure towards east will be treated as positive. Departure at west will be treated as negative. So accordingly here these particular values are computed. As we have the algebraic sum, latitude sigma L comes to be minus 0 0.07 whereas sigma D comes to be minus 0.16. Hence the error can be worked out as square root of the sigma L square plus sigma D square and it comes to be 0 0.17. Similarly, the direction can also be worked out. So, as we have some sigma L and sigma D, as we plot the traverse, obviously it won't be balanced traverse and this will be in the form of the closing error. So in order to have that particular closing error distributed among these particular sides, we make use of this particular expression. So here the correction to latitude of say line AB will be worked out as length of that particular line. Here it is 189.53 divided by perimeter which comes to be 939.46 into total error in latitude which comes to be minus 0 0.07 with its opposite sign we will be getting that particular correction as 0 0.014. Hence minus 188.4 plus 0 0.014 which comes to be minus 188.39. Similarly, for line AB, the correction for this particular departure can be worked out as 189.53 divided by 939.46 into minus 0.16. So, with opposite sign, that comes to be 0 0.032. Hence, minus 20.63 plus 0 0.032 comes to be minus 20.6. So in the similar manner, we can work out all the corrected consecutive coordinates. So here, as we have their algebraic sum, it has to be 
zero. We can have this graphical solution for balancing this particular traverse. So it is mostly used for the compass traverses. However, if we are also dealing with certain theodolite traverse, which is of certain say uh, for inferior works, we can make use of this graphical solution. So here the total error is distributed among various stations by shifting each traverse station from its plotted position by the distance proportional to its distance from the starting station in a direction parallel to direction of the closing error. Say here, as you see, this blue color traverse A, B, C1, D1 and say A1. As such, here this particular A1 is closing error. So, here we can have this particular traverse plotted to certain convenient scale in open manner such as AB, BC, CD and lastly A dash. The scale with that adopt may not be same as that of this particular plotted traverse. Here, this closing error AA1 will be plotted with the same magnitude as A dash A1. The direction is also maintained to be same. Connect this A and A1 and draw the parallels through D, C, B to get the positions D1, C1, B1. So this particular D, D1, C, C1, B, B1 are the corrections to be applied with the same direction in order to balance that particular traverse. So as you see here, this station A is shifted by amount AA1 in order to get the red positions for the traverse to be adjusted. Here this B1 is to be shifted towards this B through the amount B1B which is worked out as AB by P into AA1. Similarly, this C1 needs to be shifted towards this C with the amount AB plus BC by P into A1 and accordingly. So, here we will be getting this particular plotted traverse red colored one which is adjusted. We have another method which is called as transit rule for balancing this particular traverse. This method is preferred when angular measures are more precise as compared to linear measurements. Here the ratio of error in latitude of a line to total error in latitude is equal to the ratio of latitude of that line to the arithmetical sum of all the latitudes of the sides of that traverse. The statement can be written for departures in the same manner. Here, as we balance the traverse, the angles are not much changed as compared to their lengths. So, here, error in latitude of any line can be worked out as total error in latitude. 
into latitude of that line divided by arithmetical sum of all latitudes. Hence, the correction will be just with the opposite sign of the error that we have quantified by making use of this particular expression. So the similar expression for the departures can be worked out the way I have presented here. So for the same travels that we dealt with for earlier example, the consecutive coordinates will be remaining same whereas here this particular latitude corrections and departure corrections will be quantified by making use of this particular expression. So correction in latitude of AB is equal to latitude of that line here it is 188.4 divided by arithmetical sum of all that particular latitudes which comes to be this 681.27 into the total error in latitude which is nothing but minus 0 0.07 the way we worked out in the previous example. So the correction comes to be 0 0.019. Similarly, the correction in departures of AB can be worked out with the opposite signs the way I have shown here as 0 0.007. Hence, by making use of these particular corrections, corrected coordinates can be worked out. And as a check, here sigma L and sigma D can be checked to how their sum as 0, 0. Another rule is third rule for balancing of the traverse. In this, total error is distributed in proportion to the length of the traverse legs. Here, for example, correction to the northing of any side will be given as northing of that side divided by sum of northings into half the total error of the latitude. Similarly, here the correction of that total southing for any side will be southing of that side divided by sum of southings into the total error in latitude half of its magnitude. Similar expression is for correction for Eastings and Westings. Here, the way we discussed earlier, if the error is positive, correction will be obviously with negative sign and vice versa. So here, the balancing of closing error can also be done by third rule. Here for the given data of length and directions, the consecutive coordinates are worked out. In order to work out the respective corrections in latitude and departures, we can make use of the expressions that we discussed on our earlier slide. So, Error in latitude of any line can be worked out by multiplying half of the total error in latitude with northing of that line divided by arithmetical sum of all the northings. Here, as you see, for line AB, the latitude is negative. That means it is southing. Hence, the correction for this particular southing can be worked out as southing of that side AB divided by arithmetical sum of all the southings into half of the total area in latitude. Here it comes to be 188.4 divided by 340.7 into minus 0 0.0752 with its opposite sign the correction is 0 0.019 so as we apply this it gives us 
corrected Saudi as 188.38. In the similar manner, here this particular departure is also negative. That means here the correction for this particular vesting of AB needs to be worked out. So vesting of that particular line is 20.63. The arithmetical sum of all the vestings come to be 246.71. Whereas the total error in departures being 0.16, half of it can be considered to work out the correction for the vesting as 0 0.007. And accordingly, here we can work out this particular corrected departure. So, in the same manner, here we can perform the calculations. And lastly, we can apply the check in order to get the algebraic sum of latitudes and departures as 0, 0. All that particular calculations that we did can be systematically performed in a format given by Geller. You can go through these particular steps. We will discuss these particular steps by making use of certain example on next slide. So the way you see here, we have worked out on certain traverse P, Q, R, S, T, P. Here the traverse is closed. Hence the various links P, Q, Q, R, R, S, etc. with their respective lengths. All the included angles that are recorded at each of the particular stations are recorded in this particular column. As we sum these, the sum comes to be 540 degrees one minute. That means here this particular one minute needs to be adjusted. So here we can apply the corrections the way we discussed in earlier presentation. So, minus 12 seconds from each of that particular angles can be deducted in order to work out these particular corrected angles. So, the corrected sum of the corrected angles comes to be 540 degrees. For line PQ, if the recorded whole circle bearing is 288 degrees 45 minutes 25 seconds. So, by making use of fast needle method, here the Whole circle bearings of remaining sides can be worked out by making use of this particular uh, corrected angles. By using this particular whole circle bearings, we can work out their respective reduced bearings and even their respective coordinates can be worked out as northwest, southwest, southeast, southeast, northeast, etc. So these particular coordinates will help us to know whether the worked out latitude can be put up as northing, southing or departure as easting, westing in their respective columns. So as you see here, for line PQ, as it is lying in this particular northwest quadrant. It will have northing of 29.87, whereas southing, sorry, whereas here the departure as 87.97. Similarly, for line QR, we can work out their particular southings as it is lying in this particular southwest quadrant. Similarly, here we can work out their westing. So in the same manner, we can work out their particular consecutive coordinates and we can place its value depending on the quadrant in which that line is like. We can 
apply the corrections by making use of any methods that we discussed in our earlier slides. Here, the transit rule is used in order to work out these particular corrections. So accordingly, here these particular corrections are put up in their respective columns with their requisite sign. By making use of these particular corrections, we have worked out these particular corrected consecutive coordinates. As we discussed earlier, in order to work out this particular set of coordinates, we can start with our initial station or otherwise we can consider the most westerly station. Here, we have started with this particular starting station with some arbitrary values of 200, 200 as total coordinate. Hence, 200 plus 29.89 will be 229.89. Minus this 80.41, hence 149.48. So accordingly, we can work out the total coordinates. Similarly, here for easting 200. Now, for line PQ, there is a westing, hence 200 minus 87.95, it will give you 11.05. Minus this 4.82 will get 107.23. So, as we move ahead with their respective corrected consecutive coordinates, we will be able to work out the total coordinates the way I have shown here in this particular table. As we have worked out the corrected latitudes and departures, we can make use of the same in order to plot the stations. So, here as we have now the total coordinates, we can start plotting with most western station so that the entire traverse will be lying in this particular northeast quadrant. So, as we have this particular plotted traverse, we can proceed with determining the area of all or any portion. We can also work out the determine the length as well as the direction between the two points. We can also look at the new points by intersection methods. So all that are say further applications by making use of the total coordinates as mentioned here. In order to calculate this proper traverse area, we can make use of different approaches. Say, here the way we discussed earlier, we have determined the total coordinates with respect to the most westerly station and the whole traverse is plotted the way shown in this particular sketch. So, now these coordinates can be arranged in this particular determinant form as shown here. So, x1, x2, x3, x4 till the first point x1. Similarly, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5 and y1. Here this particular y1, x2 diagonally opposites are considered with solid lines. Whereas, the lower one again considered with these particular dotted lines. So, we can have the sum of the products of the coordinates joined by these particular solid lines, which can be termed as say sigma p. So, it will be nothing but 
y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x4 plus y4 x5 plus y5 x1. Similarly, the sum of the products of that coordinates which are connected by this particular dotted line can, can, can also be hard and expressed as this sigma q, hence x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y4 plus x4 y5 plus x5 y1. The difference in this sigma p and sigma q will be double area. Hence, in order to compute the area of the traverse, we can have half of sigma p minus sigma q. So this particular process that we discussed is explained by making use of this particular example. So as you see, we are provided with this particular traverse A, B, B, C, C, D, T, e, and E, A. So with their respective lines, we can work out the corrected latitudes and departures. By making use of that particular corrected latitude and departures, we can work out their independent coordinates with the appropriate signs. So as we have that, then the way we put up they can be put up as this particular determinant form. Here, this particular sigma p 200 into 220.5 plus 425.5 into 430.5. So, here we can have the sigma p as 288.75. Similarly, here this particular sum of products of the coordinate joined by dotted lines can be determined as 159265.25. So half of that sigma p minus sigma q can be worked out. It comes to be 64386.25 square meters. We can also arrange the data in this particular tableau form and accordingly here just we can have the solid lines and dotted lines and accordingly here we can work out the area in the manner we discussed on an earlier slide and the process is depicted here. One more method is making use of meridian distance and double meridian distance. So let's try to understand what is the concept of that particular meridian distance and double meridian distance. As we see here, we are dealing with this particular traverse A B, C, D, A, which is nothing but this closed traverse. So, we choose most westerly station and we assume the reference meridian passing through that most westerly station here. So, as we have this particular blueprint position of this particular line AB. We can work out its midpoint and we can have the ordinate with respect to this particular reference direction in order to determine this particular meridian distance of AB. So, this particular meridian distance is length of that ordinate between the midpoint of the line and the reference meridian. So similarly for say this particular line BC, we can plot their midpoint. With respect to that particular midpoint, here the ordinate can be had with respect to this particular reference direction and it, it will be considered as meridian distance of BC. Similarly, we can have for CD, we can have for DA. As we work out this particular meridian distances, we can work out the double meridian distances. So, here this particular double meridian distances of AB, which is nothing but this line, will be nothing but two times meridian distance of that particular AB 
as you see here, two times the distance of this particular AB is nothing but its departure. Its departure. So, here this particular double meridian distance of this particular BC can be worked out as double meridian distance of this particular line AB plus the departure of that particular line AB plus the departure of that line BC. Hence, double meridian distance of any side can be worked out by making use of double meridian distance of previous slide plus departure of previous slide plus departure of current slide. So, for example, if I wish to work out this particular say double meridian distance of this particular line CD, for this particular line CD, the previous line is BC, hence double meridian distance of that line BC plus the departure of that line BC being, being the previous line plus the departure of that line CD, which is nothing but the current line. So, here, having known these particular meridial distances and the double meridian distances and that concept that we discussed in this, we can determine the area of the traverse under consideration. So, to determine this particular area, we have to work out the product of double meridian distances and latitude of that particular line. The area can be computed by having half of algebraic sum of all such products. So, here just we will consider one example. Say, we are dealing with certain travels A, B, C, D, A. We have computed their respective latitude and departures which are in the form of the total coordinates. So by making use of these particular rules, we can work out their double meridial distances. Now we have to determine the product of that particular double meridian distances and their latitudes with their respective signs. Hence, here 225.5 is to be multiplied with their double meridian distance which is nothing but 120.5 which comes to be 271.72.75. Similarly, here we can have that particular product as minus 245 into 451 as minus 110495. Hence, as we determine their sum, the algebraic sum comes to be 12849725. So, as we have half of it, it gives us the total area 64248.63 square meters. We can make use of the departures and total latitudes in order to compute the area. So here the same concept we have mentioned that is the reference meridian is passing through this particular most westerly station. We have to follow these particular steps. So we have to determine the total latitude of each station using the latitude and departures of all the lines. We have to determine the algebraic sum of departures of lines meeting at that particular station. So, in order to determine this particular area, 
the algebraic sum of the departures into total latitude of each station can be determined and half of the algebraic sum of all such products will be nothing but the area. So as we see in this particular table, we have the lines A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A. Their respective latitudes as well as the departures are overgrammed. So here we have assigned stations at their respective locations as B, C, D, A. Hence, the total latitude at that particular station is worked out. Here initially it is 225.5 minus 245 it will give us 19.5 minus 150.5 it will give us minus 170. So last station it has a latitude of 170 hence it will be 0. So we can have the algebraic sum of adjacent departures here. So 120.5 plus this 210 for the station B because AB and BC are adjacent styles. Hence it comes to be 330.5. Five. As we consider this particular say now the next station C. Here the adjacent sites are BC and CD. Hence the sum 210 minus 110.5 is to be taken and accordingly here we move ahead with these kind of computations. So we have the departures and we have worked out this particular set total latitudes at each of these particular stations. Hence, their products can be put up the way shown here in this particular table. We can determine their particular total and the algebraic sum of these particular products can be had. It comes to be 128772.5. So the area will be computed by dividing this particular algebraic sum of all the products by 2, which comes to be 64386.25. We can make use of inversing as we have the total coordinates of the stations. So here as we consider this particular station C and station D, their total coordinates are given here. So in order to work out this particular say their lengths, we can plot these particular stations using these particular northeast coordinates. We can determine the particular differences the way it is shown here. So as you see here, the respective differences in latitude will be B, in departures will be A. Hence, we can make use of the Pythagorean and accordingly we can determine the length. Also we can determine the tan theta as a by b and having the inverse of this we can determine the direction. So this is a root of x2 minus x1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square it gives 886 whereas here the theta can be worked out as 33 degrees, 33 minutes, 40 seconds by using this particular expression. So thank you for attention. I hope the concepts that we discussed are clear to you. 
so in the next presentation i will discuss about the methods for determination of the omitted measurements in theodore traverse so bye till then thank you i wish you very happy learning